based on research so far, I would consider Pelsall Labour Club to have been the most prolifically haunted club in the history of Pelsall. Even a psychic medium refused to enter the main room once, saying that too many spirits were trying to get through to her. Pelsall Labour Club, which was once situated on Church Road, Pelsall, was founded in 1919. The original part of the building, which was a house, can be seen in the photograph. It is believed that the house was bought by a group of miners who clubbed together to purchase a house to turn it into a miners' pub for miners only. Due to its popularity, in later years Pelsall Labour Club was significantly extended and was host to both its regulars and numerous clubs which were based there. Despite the age of the old part of Pelsall Labour Club, most paranormal activity experienced there occurred in the modern parts of the building. Most members of staff had experienced paranormal activity at some time or another at Pelsall Labour Club as it occurred so frequently. When I spoke to Helen, who was the wife of the steward, she was able to tell me a whole host of paranormal activity which had taken place at Pelsall Labour Club, all of which had been experienced by herself, family members and other employees at Pelsall Labour Club. Helen told me that Steve Duggan, who ran the Pigeon Club from there, was under the stage once, organising his pigeon crates when he heard footsteps above him, as if someone was walking across the stage. Thinking it was Chris, he shouted to him, but got no answer. When he got from under the stage, he couldn't see anyone, so he went looking to find out who it was. The labour club was empty, so Steve made his way upstairs, where he found that Chris was in the bathroom and hadn't been downstairs. A couple of months previous to this, Steve was in the office and heard what sounded like excited children running around and screaming in the main hall. When he went in to investigate, he found that the hall was completely empty. Helen's youngest son, James, often heard snooker being played late at night, long after the labour club had closed for the evening. The snooker room was on the first floor of the old part of the building. On one occasion, when Helen's future daughter-in-law, Haley got to the top of the stairs in the old part of the building. As she looked into the snooker room, which is at the end of the corridor, she was shocked to see a man wearing a flat cap, just standing there. Within seconds he had vanished. One night, Pete Jeffries went to get the stand for the Play Your Cards Right game, which is stored backstage in the main hall. As he walked in there, he noticed two men sitting on the raised balcony just under the Penny Skite memorial plaque. As Pete came off the stage, he started to walk over to where the men had been sitting to tell them that there was nothing going on in the main hall that evening and that the bingo was being held in the lounge. But, as he headed towards where they had been sitting, he found that there was no one there. Pete was perplexed because there was no way that they could have walked across and out of the hall without him hearing or seeing them. The men were nowhere to be found in the labour club. Helen said that she had been told that there was a man washing over her when she was behind the bar. Although she had never seen him or been unnerved by his presence. She did, however, on one occasion have a terrifying experience when cleaning up behind the bar after the Labour Club had closed for the evening. Helen had just washed the drip mats and draped them over the bottle bank. Then she turned around to wash some glasses. As she turned back she saw one of the drip mats suspended in mid-air as if someone was holding it in their hand. Terrified she screamed out obscenities at it and the mat dropped to the floor. 
Although she never experienced anything else quite as confrontational as this experience, she was in no doubt that late at night the Labour Club was host to numerous unseen spirit entities. Helen's awareness of this presence was put into perspective some years previously, after a visiting psychic medium refused to enter the main room, telling her that there were so many spirits trying to get through there would need to be more than one psychic medium, as the presences were so overwhelming. When I spoke to Mrs Duggan, who was Steve Duggan's mum, she told me about the ghost of Penny Skite, which was often seen in the main room. The ghost of Penny Skite had been seen on numerous occasions, walking across the hall in her familiar flowery dress, or sitting at her once favourite chair with a pint in her hand. She was a very regular visitor to Pelsall Labour Club and it was not unusual for her to put in an appearance. Mrs Duggan remembered Mrs Skite very well. Another strange phenomenon concerned a mirror in the main room. Helen told me that the mirror was always scrupulously cleaned in the morning by cleaners but by the end of the day it was always covered with fingerprints, despite the fact that no one had been near it. On one occasion the secretary watched the mirror being cleaned in the morning and made an observation of the mirror during the day and night. True to form, there were fingerprints all over it again, despite the fact that there had definitely been no one near it. Helen told me that the bar staff often saw something out of the corner of their eye or felt something behind the bar with them. The cleaners were often tapped on the shoulder when they were vacuuming in the building, but there was never anything malicious. Helen told me that the children's room was very active and that many noises and voices were heard coming from that room when the club was empty. It was thought that the curious founder members of Pelsall Labour Club returned from the other side on the odd occasion to see how their investment had developed over the years. This immediate area has quite a profound history. As in the Victorian era, this area was densely populated by numerous families and their lodgers. Slate Row once existed to the right of Pelsall Labour Club these buildings were known as this due to the fact that most of the families who lived there were so poor that they lived on the slate. The Starkey buildings also existed around here in the late 1800s. These buildings were owned by the Starkey family who managed Pelsall Hall Colliery. Many families lived in both of these buildings and once occupied this space. As for the children heard in the building, these may be the result of residual energy from a distant and happy past. Today, a small clubhouse and new properties occupy this area. I do wonder if any paranormal activity has been experienced by any of the new occupants. If you ever had a paranormal experience at Pelsall Labour Club and you would like to share your experience, Please get in touch. I will be delighted to hear from you.